Ah, fighting sickness. What's up, everybody? So, I have not been feeling well. That's okay. Life must go on. So, I wanted to kind of show you quickly what I'm doing. Um, I'm currently working on a remote um, triggering device to discharge the giant uh, 10,000 joule capacitor bank. I wanted to be able to remotely do this without touching it. A lot of people who do the big passenger bank discharges will use some sort of an air system. So you're electrically not connected to anything. It's all air controlled. Um, so what I'm going to be doing is using remote uh, with some safeties. So instead of using air, I'm just using an actual remote. If I remember correctly, and I hope I do, a guy by the name of Battery Phil, long time ago, sent me an old helicopter that he had and when I received this it was pretty beat up it may have <clears throat> gotten beat up in shipping but I had to uh, had to re-solder some joints inside this thing and some wires are broken off but I managed to get this working and I have the remote here okay and that's actually what I'm going to be using for my triggering my um, <clears throat> my remote so this is currently the test board that I have. All right, um, I will show you really quickly how this works. But one thing I want to tell you really quickly is <clears throat> I'm using servos to activate limit switches. All right, now the reason that I like this is because um, I actually didn't want to make some brackets. So what I did is just drew up a quick little mounting bracket and printed them off on my 3D printer. So within the matter of, um, <clears throat> took me a half an hour to draw it up, and then it took me half an hour to print one of them out. So within an hour, I had an actual mounted limit switch. Pretty freaking sweet. Considering I was sitting on my couch next to my kid and wife, and uh, my kids and my wife, while I drew it up, I walked downstairs, slapped it in a printer, and printed it. Crazy. Pretty cool stuff. Um, so, oh man, I don't feel good. It's all good though. Let me show you what I got. All right, let's sit this down. So this is the current test setup. What it is, is a, a battery and a receiver, two servos, okay? One's to, to arm the capacitor bank and allow it for charging. The other is to actually fire it, all right? So what I've got here is three old timers I took out of an old panel they dismantled at work. All right, got a bunch of these things. All right, these things are about since probably 1947 they've been at that plant, and I <clears throat> had to take them apart and redo the contacts, clean them up real well because they weren't making contacts. But other than that, they work. They're just uh, one second to 300 second AC voltage timers with double sets of uh, normally open, normally closed contacts. Now, I've also got a strobe light here, okay, out of an old light that they took apart. Um, <clears throat> they replaced it work. I resoldered all the joints and the thing still works. So that's my, that tells me that this thing's working. Then I've got three lights, one on each relay. The first relay, uh, well, let's start with these limit switches. This limit switch, what it does is it allows for charging of the capacitor bank. So I know you're going to ask me for a circuit diagram. This is the best I can give you. I just sat down and sketched this up real quick. But basically, the first normally closed limit switch, what it does is it holds down a normally open or a normally closed, actually, relay contact. Oop, like that. All right, so it holds a normally closed relay contact. What that does is it shorts the capacitor bank out through a large resistor at all times. So when I open, when I first trigger the first limit switch it opens up this contact and allows me to charge. When this happens the flashing light turns on. This, this allows me to know that I'm live and I'm going to be charging. Okay. The next stage is a second limit switch. All right. The second limit switch what it does is it actually starts the sequence. So what happens is the first timer starts for whatever I want it. This one. Okay. Then whenever that triggers the second timer starts. The second timer is actually the triggering one. As soon as it triggers, that's when everything fires. Okay, not when it comes on, but when it finishes, when it triggers. 
All right, so whatever how many seconds I set that to. Then the third one latches on always until you disconnect this first limit switch. This one will always stay on, and what this does is it actually disables both of these and it shorts out the capacitor bank, so it energizes this coil relay again. All right, um, that's basically it. Um, simple as that. And then on the output side, there's just a contact which goes to this terminal strip right here. And <clears throat> that actually allows me to energize whatever the load is. So in the end of this, it'll be probably a high voltage neon sign transformer triggering a trigatron of some kind to actually make this thing fire, similar to the PAP setup. But for now, I'm directly testing loads. That's what I'm going to do. I'll explain to you that in a minute. Let's start really quickly, quickly with this. So <clears throat> here is the two limit switches right here and the three timers. So what's going to happen is here's what's cool about this remote. All right, When you set it up to this original um, receiver, you can set a fail safe. So what that does is it allows you to set up a fail safe. So if I lose signal all right, to this remote, everything goes back to original. Okay, on the throttle anyway. So if I turn this on, I already got the battery on. What it's going to do is it's going to it's going to connect. All right, now I'm now I'm live. All right. So the first the first thing that's going to happen is you have to energize right here the throttle all the way up. Okay. That turns on my charge. Now I'm good. Now I can walk around. I can set this down. Oh, I quit. Oh, there we go. I can set this down. I can go um, charge up my capacitor bank remotely and get everything set up. Once I'm ready, this I have to hold this over. Okay. And what happens is it goes through a sequence. So first timer comes on for five seconds is what I got set to. This is one second. All right. Then everything everything stops. Okay. Now I can let go of this, which I originally had to hold. Nothing happens. But this is latched on, which turns on my safety. So everything comes on. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to cut the footage there. You didn't notice it, probably. Um, so anyway, what happens is this now turns my safety relay okay, back on, which discharges what's left of the capacitor bank through my big giant resistor okay which I'm actually using a heating coil out of a heater um, so that's really the essential functionality of it if I if in order to get this system to reset I actually have to throttle off which is just a throttle and th throttle back on now everything is reset now I have to I do have to hold this and I can fire it again but if I let go it's still charged nothing happened until these timers sequence Okay, so I have to hold this over. This is my dead man switch. All right. Now here's what's cool. Let's say I'm here charging. Okay, let's move this back. Okay, I I got this. I whatever happens. I'm walking around with this remote. Okay, <clears throat> and I lose power. Let's say if the power goes off. Okay, watch what happens. This servo automatically returns to its failsafe. Now, if I turn it back on, it'll go back to its original position. Okay? So, if for some reason I lose signal with this device, everything just goes to failsafe. Okay? That's why I use this remote. So, you can thank Battery Phil for uh, sending this thing to me. I, I had it in a box for a while and didn't really know what to use it for. <clears throat> Lots of applications, but I finally found a good one. So, hold this over and fire our sequence. Alright, that's how that works. Now, if it fail saves now, it's back to the original. Everything goes back to off. And the normally closed contact relay, even if I lose full power, will short the capacitor bank back out. Okay, so I'll have an external charger. Um, but, <clears throat> or 
let's see. Let me unplug this so I don't hurt myself. There we go. But um, what's going to be happening? All right. Here's what I'm going to actually be doing. I've got some uh, some contacts, some contactors. All right, really big ones. All right. Some of these are 40 volts, so I'm going to have to use a step-up transformer like this and a, uh, a Variac to actually trigger these. But I literally want to test this capacitor bank with a dead short condition and find out what happens. I know what these um, contact relays look like when they short out under load. Here is a, <coughs> a prime example. <coughs> this is the center part, all right, and the outer two terminals. They are literally welded together. All right, you can see that they're welded together. All right, so I know what these look like under just a standard dead short condition. Now, there was a relay, <clears throat> excuse me, a breaker on here, but even for that instant, that before that breaker tripped, that's that's what a contact under normal load will look like. So, <clears throat> I've got a bunch of different contactors. I'm probably going to try about four of them, including some small relays, just to see what happens. And <clears throat> I'll be standing way far away from this big giant capacitor bank. <clears throat> Man, ugh. So, that's where I'm starting. Um, I'm going to just see what a dead short condition looks like. Then I'll know what kind of power I'm dealing with. Um, I will be doing this outside, and I will be doing it while it's symbol probably either dark or close to dark so that we get a pretty good visual on what's going on um, so that's it that is my um, quick run through of what I plan on doing with the capacitor bank as a starting point and then I will move to some sort of a high voltage triggering uh, trigatron type of triggering device similar to what the PAP setup is and um, <clears throat> then I can run my quarter shrinking tests so can is all sorts of stuff um, so that's that's what I plan on doing and I just wanted to give you a quick update and uh, let you know that I have been working on it um, things have been really slow and um, yeah for those of you who want to know um, I did have my third child and I'm excited about that so that's been taking up my time as well as you can imagine uh, but that's it Russ rwgresearch.com is my website I'll have the capacitor bank page linked here and I'll have some pictures of this posted there so anyway that's all I got for you <clears throat> I am gonna go get better see you. have a good day guys thanks for all the help